Moving into section 4.4, uh, we're going to talk about a couple more methods of apportionment, uh, which again, the book kind of follows a historical path of what methods were used in what order, and that's kind of the reason these were used. But next up is Adam's method and Webster's method, which are both in section four. So if we look at Adam's method, it says step one, find a suitable divisor. Step two, using the suitable divisor, compute each state's modified quota. And step three, each, di uh, each state is a portion its modified upper quota. So notice everything about this is literally identical to Jefferson's method. Um, the only difference is it says to use the upper quota. So TLDR here, you round up instead of round down. Everything else will be the same. And the, the same, basically every one of these procedures is the same as Jefferson's method because they use the modified divisor method. Uh, and Webster's method, since notice that Jefferson's rounds down, Adams rounds up, well, Webster, what's left, round conventionally. Find a suitable divisor using it as a divisor, compute the modified quota, and lastly, find the apportionment using a rounded quota, um, conventional rounding. And so the, a little bit of historical aspect here is in 1832, uh, John Adams proposed, proposed that they switch it from rounding down to rounding up. And the reason that rounding down was kind of a problem is actually there was population bias to rounding up and rounding down as well, similar to how Hamilton's method favored larger populations, uh, so did Jefferson's method if I recall correctly. And Adam's method was also biased towards smaller populations. And you can imagine why certain politicians might want one form of apportionment opposed to another um, because because one favors certain types of populations. And certain demographic, certain presidents might want to appeal to the smaller states, whereas others might want to appeal to larger states just for whatever political reasons. Um, and really, it's an issue to keep swapping between methods. So in the U.S. history, there was some change between methods, and there's a lot of, you can imagine, bickering about this. Uh, for me, I have this funny picture of my head, in my head about founding fathers and people arguing with mathematicians about all of these things and kind of bickering about this horrible, boring math. Uh, and it, I don't know, it just creates a really funny mental image in my head. Uh, but anyways, soon after Webster proposed a method of using conventional rounding, you, you wonder why it took so long to, you know, to propose just using normal rounding, uh, which is population neutral, as opposed to favoring larger and smaller states. Um, so anyways, let's, let's do an example of using these methods next. So in the packet, you know, will be the next page. Um, and really, to just to sort of recap, the only difference uh, is when we're going to be applying Adam's method, we're going to always round up, and we're applying Webster's, we're going to be rounding conventionally. But otherwise, we're still doing the whole guess and check divisor methodology. So in each case, what we're going to do is we're going to use Adam's method to do the scholarship example, and we're going to use Webster's method to do the scholarship example, and then we'll do a quick comparison of the results uh, based on our different you know, what, what, what were the different outcomes when we swap methodology? Um, so let's, let's start with, and, and also if you're, if you're a little bit stuck on, okay, where do I begin? There's all these different methods. How do I know where to start? Well, it's always the same in that you always start with the standard divisor. You always calculate the standard quotas. And really, since we've done that already, uh, I didn't, I kind of have already filled that information here, but remember first step, take the total population divide by the number of seats. That will give you your standard divisor. You divide through by the standard divisor, figure out what that gets you. Um, and in the case of Adam's method, we're going to be rounding up. So if we were checking the standard divisor, we'd round each of our numbers up instead. And again, regardless of what the decimal is, you're gonna be using the upper quota. And remember that if it's already round, uh, you don't need to add one to it because it's round. A rounded number does not need to be rounded, but something like 6.025 is not an acceptable number of seats, so that needs to be rounded, and regardless of what it is, it will be rounded up um, in Adam's method. Sorry, my when I'm writing here on my tablet, it's a little bit too small there. I need to make it bigger. Okay, we're good. So also, we want to know, well, did that work? Obviously, if we're rounding, it all, rounding them all up, it's not going to add up, right? Because that's going to be 14... 18, 20, 22, no good. So Adam's method, I'm going to need to find a new divisor. And as you're, as you're, you know, if you're thinking about it, well, if the quota was too high, 
what I need to do is low, uh, raise the standard divisor because because I, I want to make sure the quotas go down. So actually, I'm, I'm writing this in the wrong way. But my goal is that the quotas go down because they're too high. That means I want the standard divisor to increase. And that's something that you can remember about Adam's method. The modified divisor should always be larger than the standard divisor. And so it gives you, a, uh, you know, something where you know what to do first. Uh, so technically you can skip even calculating the standard divisor, but I always recommend finding the standard divisor first because it gives you uh, a sense of where you're at. How close are you? With 22, we're pretty close. Um, and since we did this example with Jefferson's method where we found 35 to be a suitable divisor, what I might guess probably is my first choice would be like I'm just gonna write MD1 for modified divisor one. Let, I would guess maybe 45, right? Because if lowering it by five worked before, maybe raising it by five would work now. And you you know once you've done a problem a couple different ways, you get a better sense of how to approach it. But we'll see. Maybe this will work. Maybe this will not. I don't actually remember. But let's just see what happens. So same deal. We're gonna take each number, divide it by the new number. But now what I need to remember is that I'm rounding them all up regardless. And that's the thing you got to be careful about between each method is just make sure you're rounding the right way. And that's the only, the, literally the only difference. Uh, but with uh, if biology got 5.35, which would round up to six, business would round up, to, is, is actually exactly round given the choice of 45. Religion 3.2 would round up to four. Let's do art 64 divided by 45 and 80 divided by 45. And since those were all uh, had an increase to the divisor, those are all way smaller. And when I round them up, it's kind of helping. So 1.4 would round up to two and 1.7 would round up to two. And that gives me 6, 12, 16, 18, 20. Cool, that worked. And and if you can see my thinking, since, since I already kind of knew how much to adjust it before, it made it a little bit easier. Obviously that thought process was not guaranteed to work. Um, but a lot of times you can think, my, my point here is to try to think uh, smarter rather than harder uh, and give you some tips to help you find these better. But if, if I'm just making it worse and giving you way too much advice and too many confusing things at once, ultimately a lot of what I'm saying is not that important. You can just keep guessing. If you're persistent, you should be able to find it. Just make sure to keep guessing, don't give up, and always just pay attention to how you're rounding. Always round either up or down, or conventionally depending on which method you're trying to do. And that would be our answer for the final Adam's apportionment. And I, I give you guys a lot of space in the packet so that when you try them yourself, you know, I give you lots and lots of columns so that a lot of times you're not going to guess the right divisor. And again, we would call this a suitable divisor here. You're not going to guess the suitable divisor on the first try usually. Uh, and if you do, maybe it was just luck um, and who knows. So anyways, let's let's go ahead and do the same thing with Webster's method try to figure out how many scholarships each department will get. Uh, and again, start with the standard divisor. But what Webster's method said to do is round them all conventionally. So if we take each of those standard quotas and round them conventionally, 6.0 would round down to 6, 6.7 would round up. So now we're just rounding based on the rule that if it's 0.5 or greater, we round up. If it's less than 0.5, we're going to round down, as is all conventional rounding. Um, but 1.6 would round up and 3.6 would also round up to 4. And if we look at the sum of the rounded quotas, so since this is Webster's, I'm going to go ahead and change that to RQ for rounded quota, because uh, UQ usually means upper quota, which is not correct for Webster's method. Um, so that's a little typo in my packet, um, which I never noticed before. Anyways, not important. That would give us a total of 13, 17, 19, 21 which is not going to work. But it, notice it's actually closer because when you're rounding conventionally, it's going to be pretty close since the standard quota was perfect. And sometimes even when you're using Webster's method, the standard quota might be a suitable divisor, but a lot of times it's not. Um, and then the question is, what do I do next? But one thing about Webster's method is unlike Jefferson's and Adams, we don't necessarily know, should I raise it or lower it? So you really need to start with the standard divisor to see what, am I, what should I do next? Should I increase or decrease the modified divisor? And so what I would say is, well, this is too many. I want to decrease the quota, so I need to increase the divisor. 
And what I'll probably do is I will not change it by as much as the previous examples, because in the previous examples, uh, it was off by more to begin with. It was off by two. Now it's only off by one. So what I would probably guess first is maybe I'll make a slight, a more slight adjustment. Maybe I'll guess 41 for my modified divisor and see if that works. And again, when I'm just what I'm, when I'm rounding, I want to make sure to remember round conventionally since that was Webster's method. So again, I'm just going to do some type in here. Divide each by 41. That gives me, looks like I messed up the first one, but that would be 6.58 would round up to 7. 3.53 would round up to 4. Let's redo 241. That would give me 5.3, which would round down to 5. Um, 64 divided by 41. Oops. I used 45 there, didn't I? Let me undo that. And this is why we want to keep track of our work, because it's very easy when you're doing these problems and keeping guessing more and more numbers. You can see how it could be easy to lose track of what number you're doing and easily make the mistake I just made. But I want to do 241 divided by 41, which would be 5.8. That would round up to 6. And 80 divided by 41 would be 1.9 which would stay 2. So it appears as though 41 actually did not change this at all and unfortunately that was no good. Um, so if I if I see a no change what I could do is maybe increase it by a little bit more. Uh, if And actually uh, an argument for actually keeping track of your work is that I could actually see these results and see how close they were but notice how a couple of those numbers were really close to being to changing from 0.5 you know down greater or smaller. So they're kind of on the edge between being rounded up and down. And that's kind of how you can determine how much you do. But what I might do next is just change it to 42. Because that was actually pretty close. Some of those numbers were pretty close to be rounding down instead of up. And maybe 42 will tip the scale. But maybe not. Again, I don't know. Um, but I probably don't want to go all the way to 45 because that will give out Forty-five will give out way too few because it actually worked under a different method. Like when I went around them all down, it worked. But if I run them conventionally, that this number will guarantee not work anymore. So I kind of already have a range in my mind, somewhere in between forty and forty-five, and I'm thinking it's somewhere more in the middle. Um, and it's probably not too close to forty-five if I had to guess. <sighs> Anyways, this this is tedious. I don't really find this sort of math very fun. But there is an intense, there is a lot of strategy involved. And, um, you know, there's a little bit of like that, yes, I found it, I'm done sort of feeling when you actually get it right. Um, and just, you know, be determined, don't give up, and you'll be fine. Oops, I can't type. But basically, I'm just doing all the same crap again, using 42 instead, the meaning of life. So this would stay 6.7 rounded conventionally, would. 5.7 would round up to 6. 6.4, however, would round down to 6. So notice this has already made an impact in my answer. 145 divided by 42 would give me 3.45. That would round down to 3. 64 divided by 42 would be 1.52, would round up to 2. And 80 divided by 42 would round up to 2. And actually, notice that that actually went a little bit too far. Um, because notice that both business and religion both kind of switched because they were both right on that boundary line and they both flipped when I increased it even just by one. So this is an example where 41 gave me too many, but 42 gave me too few. So I know it has to be in between there somewhere. And uh, there is always guaranteed to be a suitable advisor in there. Uh, even if it could come down to really, really hard, you know, really, really small decimals. Um, but it will work. And so actually, I'm going to leave off this problem here, and I'm going to challenge you see if you can find it. Uh, and if you want, pause it now, because I'm going to spoil the answer. I b well, actually, I don't remember the answer. I believe it's 41.3, or it's 41.5. Actually, I don't remember. So you get to find it yourself and enjoy. But anyways, that is Webster's method. At the end of the day, Jefferson's, Webster's, uh, Adams and even hunting to tell they're all really the same method. The only difference is the rounding paradigm. And you might be wondering, well, that was pretty much every type of rounding up, down, rounded. What other type of rounding are there? And actually this is, 
the next method, which is called the Huntington Hill method, uses a entirely different rounding system than most people aren't even aware is even a thing. And there's actually a lot of different types of roundings out there beyond just those normal rounding methods, uh, which is just kind of, it's kind of working into the next video. What are other rounding systems? And then in the last section of chapter four, uh, we're going to talk about fairness, paradoxes. What are the strengths and weaknesses of each method? And what was kind of the final conclusion uh, in terms of the U.S. method of apportionment?